Scholars, many of you are new to the program this season. Though, in the graduate subdivision, more of you have been part of this before than in our younger age groups. So that is one reason we waited for this moment, for this ceremony, to announce a special award that is a tradition at the World Scholars Cup. In our program, we are so fortunate to be joined by such an incredible team. And so, much like the Coach of the Year situation, it can feel almost unfair to single anyone out for special recognition. And yet, sometimes the heart demands it. Because there are individuals on this incredible team who have been part of this program for half of their lives and who have put all of their heart into it. It is thus my honor and moment of great nervousness to announce our alpaca of the year. Their name will soon appear within this large box. First, I will try to give a sentimental but hopefully sometimes funny speech. This is a member of our team who joined it after first participating as a scholar, so it's not Olivia. It is a member of our team who was embarrassed for a long time that my greatest memory of his father was that he spent much of the last Bangkok Global Round suffering back ailments at a nearby convention center. When this year's Alpaca of the Year, who knows who he is by now and is probably making faces behind me, first joined our program, we hazed him by asking the volunteer right away in Mongolia and to stay in a hotel that costs $1.50 a night. He slept with a stranger in the room and said the door did not lock. He did not complain. Later that same weekend, when obstacles arose for which we had no solutions, such as a suitcase with alpacas in it that we could not open, we said, open it with a knife. And he literally like sliced it open so permanently that the owner of the suitcase, Mr. Patrick, was upset thereafter. We replaced the suitcase, but we could never replace the individual of whom I speak. One of my chief regrets of the pandemic, and I have so many regrets about the time we spent apart, is that when Logan Muir, when Logan Muir joined our program on a gap year. When Logan joined us on a gap year in 2019, after having already kind of been a gap year in his senior year of high school, did that make you a super senior? We had only about three or four months together before the world changed and that gap year came crashing to a premature halt. We never had the chance to spend an entire year traveling the world together, opening rounds together, singing songs together badly. But we thought we would because in January 2020, when our first round was canceled, Hong Kong, when it became clear it was going to be a difficult time, Logan had been debating whether to take a second gap year with us. And that day, when I was incredibly depressed about the fact that one round had fallen and we knew others would follow, he said, I want to stay to be part of rebuilding the program next year. Logan and I are both into comeback seasons because we are both LA Clippers fans. 
It was even harder to be a Clippers fan when we were first Clippers fans. Unfortunately, that second gap year never happened because the world was still shut down. We had a few moments together. We traveled to Turkey. We held a, you know, moments here and there. Uh, but, but also, at the end of the second gap year that never was, Logan said that as much as he wanted to stay part of the program, he would have to leave. Go focus on his family, which is a precious thing to focus on. Move to Canada to the city of Saskatoon, which he identified for us on a map. Uh, and we thought maybe we wouldn't have the chance to be at his side again on a stage like this one. Uh, Logan was not at the holiday special in December in Dubai. We missed you there. But I knew Logan well enough. The moment he said he was leaving, I started counting down for the moment he could and would come back. And when you wrote about rejoining the World Scholars Cup, I knew our program was beginning to heal. I knew things would be okay again. He recently asked for a new title, the director and coordinator of the World Scholars Cup in Canada. Absolutely. And he is known now also by a different title, the Hype Man. So Logan, I'm gonna try to hype you. I'm not good at this. You might need to teach me. Logan! <laughs> Scholars, if you're enjoying this global round, make some noise for Logan! If you did set the ball, make some noise for Logan! And also for DJ KK! <laughs> Hype is so exhausting. And I don't think any member of our team is more tired right now than you are. And we are also grateful for all the energy you've given this program this week. Thank you, Logan. There are no words I could say that the scholars are not already saying, but we can add words to the PowerPoint. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. You're gonna make me read awards after that? <laughs> scholars, this brings us, this brings us to our next award. This brings us to our first of our special category of awards. This brings us to the Da Vinci Award. The Da Vinci Award is an award given to some of our scholars in this room who may not have received recognition in one area in particular quite yet, but have showed us a diverse and well-rounded achievement that is indeed deserving of recognition. Your Da Vinci Award silver medalists are